Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about input masks and more specifically, how to create an input mask to enter values with different lengths. Today's question comes from Muhammad, and he says, In my country, our cell phone number is usually with a three-character header and seven following digits, but now some of the country is using the three-character header, which here in the U.S. we call an area code, with eight following digits. When I set the cell phone text box with an input mask for seven digits, it won't allow the use of eight, but when I set it for eight, it won't allow the use for seven. So how can I set it to accept both? When you're dealing with phone numbers, personally, I always talk in my beginner class about always storing phone numbers in text fields. Don't use number fields. If you're going to be doing math on a value, adding, subtracting, taking a sum, an average, so on, then yes, use a number field. But for things that you're not going to be doing calculations on, store them as text. However, even being stored as text, you might still want to force the user to enter the value as a digit, 0 through 9. Now, with input masks, there's two types of codes you can use. There's a 0 and there's a 9. 0 says the user must enter a digit. 9 says the user can enter a digit. That's optional. So here's how this would work in your case, Mohammed. Okay, here I've got my basic customer table, first name, last name, and so on. And over here, I've got a phone number field. Now, my phone number field has no formatting on it, no formatting and no input mask. So people can go crazy and put in whatever they want, any number of digits, characters, whatever. All right, let's clean this up. Let's get rid of these here. First of all, before you put an input mask on, make sure all the data in your field uh, uh, meets the format that you've got or else you get errors or put it on a brand new blank field. All right, so here I've got my, in, in the U.S., it's a three-digit area code followed by a seven-digit number. Let's say, just like your country, in the U.S. here, they decided to add a random eighth digit on the end there. It's optional. You can have it or not. So how would I adjust my input mask? Well, I don't have one right now. Let's put one on. Normally, for my input mask under phone number field, I'd come down here under input mask and go 000-000-000. Now, the zeros say you have to put in that digit. You have to put a digit there. As soon as I press enter or tab, notice I get this backslash space. The backslash simply means that the next character will be displayed literally. So in other words, it says display that dash. All right. Otherwise, it doesn't affect the input. Now, this forces me into that format there. However, if I put a nine on the end, now I can optionally put an eighth character there for the phone number portion. Right, three digit area code, three digit prefix, and a four or five digit suffix there. So now if I save this and go back to data sheet view, all right, if I come over here, these are all formatted properly, and I can now optionally put another character on the end there if I want to. I don't have to. All right, see how that works? If you look at Microsoft's website, you'll see all the different options here for the input mask. For example, you can do the same thing with letters. User must enter a letter or digit. User can enter a letter or digit. Or here's the same thing with just letters. User must enter a letter. User can e enter a letter. That must and can have two different options. I cover lots more about input masks in my Access Beginner Level 3 class, which Mohammed was actually taken. You can find out all the information here about input masks. And each one of my classes has a forum where you can post questions, and this is where Mohammed put his questions. So you can take my classes and ask questions right in there. And of course, right here, it says, great question. I'm going to turn this into a tech help video, which I'm doing right now. I will put a link to this class in the description below the video if you're interested in taking it. Before you take level three, however, watch my level one class, which is absolutely free on my website and on YouTube. It's a three-hour tutorial that covers all the basics. And if you like level one, you can get level two for just $1. And if you sign up for this, there's an option to get level three for 50% off. So that's a great deal. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're watching me on YouTube. Make sure to click the subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon, ring the bell, so you get notifications whenever I release new classes. If you're watching on my website, make sure you subscribe to my Access Forum. Just click the big red subscribe button. And if you have questions like this you want to see answered in a tech help video, visit my tech help page. Okay, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next time.